Hello again. Um, in this video, we will be talking about the electric field, and also we will be solving a simple problem uh, about calculating an electric field for a certain charge. Let's begin with the definition uh, of electric field. What is an electric field, and what do we need to be able calculating an electric field for a charge? Now, every charge has its own electric field. So if I assume I have these, this big charge here and it's positive Q, I have, uh, let's say it's a negative Q here, I can do the same here with maybe a positive Q, and we can say also another positive Q, it's fine. Now, each one of these charges will have its own electric field. And we know it's for the positive, charges the electric field will be always going outward where for the negative charges the electric field will be going uh, into the charge okay and we can say this is the electric field now uh, to study the electric field of a charge all what you need it's only one charge not like Coulomb's law where you need two charges to study the electrostatic force. Now, to define the electric field, let's assume this is my charge. I will call it Q1. This is Q2. I can call this Q3. That should be enough. And I have a test charge. I will say there is a small, tiny charge somewhere in this place. So we can define it, the electric field, as the electric field at a point is the electrostatic force. A unit charge or the test charge, this one here, we're going to talk about it soon, the test charge would experience if placed at a certain position. So how much electrostatic force this unit charge this test charge is experiencing because of this q or this one depending on the case so i only need one one of them now what is the test charge the test charge you need to know it is a very very small charge the magnitude is extremely small in a way that it doesn't disturb or uh, cause any trouble for the electric field generated by the main charge, the Q1 or Q2. And it can be used to serve or to allow the electrostatic force to be measured. And you need to keep in mind this test charge is a positive charge. Okay? Now, let's try to draw the, electro, uh, the electric field generated by Q1. Now, because it is a positive charge, and we're saying the electrostatic force, a unit charge experiencing, this is our unit charge here. Let's activate our laser. So it is the electrostatic force generated by this charge on this unit charge or on this test charge. So what I need to do is to draw the electric field based on the source, whether it's a positive charge, whether it's a negative charge, uh, but we're starting from our test charge. So let's say I have my test charge here, it's a Q, small Q. Now we're trying to examine the direction of the electric field one, because it's coming from Q1. So I'll start from my tested charge, and the line connecting both charges, big Q1 and this, the, this the charge. I can say it is going to be E1 this direction because the electric field is going away from Q1. Again, if I want to study the electric field generated by Q2 on this tested charge, the line connecting both of them, starting from the test charge, the electric field will be going this way because it is a negative charge and the electric field will be going in. 
same scenario for Q3. Well, it's a positive charge where from the tested charge, I will say it's like this. That will be E3. That's the way we can identify the direction of the electric field at that tested charge or at that position. Now, once again, let's go back to the definition of the electric field. Electric field means the electrostatic force a unit charge is experiencing at certain position. So that's the definition of the electric field. And we can see that the unit will be Newton per column. Also, we know that the electrostatic force from columns, though, we can calculate it to be K, Q, Q small, or the tested charge, divided on the square of the distance. So all what I need to do is to place this electrostatic force into the electric field equation. And from there, I can say the electric field is uh, 1 over Q, that's the tested charge. And I'll say, all right, that's K, Q, tested charge over R square. Now, let's identify our items here. This one here is the tested charge experiencing the electrostatic force. This part here is the electrostatic force generated between the charge Q, the one generating or the one we want to find out the electric field of it on this tested charge and that's the distance between the Q and the tested charge. Okay, so we can eliminate some items here. Let's change the color and the Q with the Q here, there will go. And from here, I can say that electric field equal constant multiplied with the Q generating that electric field divided by R square, wherever that point I want to find the electric field. And the unit, still Newton per column. Okay? That's the story of the electric field, how you can identify the direction at the tested charge. What, what do you need to identify or define an electric field? And the two formulas can be used to calculate the electric field at certain point. We can now try to solve an example here. Uh, I have a 12 micro column charge is placed at the origin. So that's my 12 micro column. Uh, what is the electric field at 5 meter if an electron was placed there? So I will say this is my 5 meter distance. I have an electron here. Okay. What would be the magnitude and direction of its acceleration? Okay, let's start step by step with this one. First of all, I can calculate the electric field, which is K Q over R square. It's 8.9, 10 to the power 9, multiplied with 12, 10 to the power minus 6. And the distance is 5 meter squared. If I do the math, that should give me 4.27, 10 to the power 3 Newton per column. So I know the direction of my sorry, the magnitude of my electric field. Now, to find how much is the electrostatic force generated, because to be able to get that acceleration, I need to go uh, this way. I'll say, okay, the force or the electrostatic force equal MA, okay? But I don't know how much is the electrostatic force yet. 
So what I'll do, I will just to handle the space. Let's take this away. And we say, all right, uh, let's find the electrostatic force. We know that E equal the electrostatic force tested charge experiencing. So from here, I can say the electrostatic force equal Q times E. Now I know I have 1.6, 10 to the power minus 19, multiplied by um, the electric field, which is 4.27, 10 to the power 3. And this, if you do the math for this one, Give me 6.8 into the power minus 16 Newton. Now I can apply the force equal MA and the acceleration will be F divided by M. The force I know it 6.8 10 to the power minus 16, the mass is 9.1, 10 to the power minus 31, that's the mass of the electron, that should give me 7.4, 10 to the power 14 meter per second square. That's the way to calculate this uh, uh, question. I hope you find it useful, and we'll see you again with another video. Thank you.